check that out. So Trick originally, back in the 90s, they actually made their shells thicker than they do today. This is what they call a T6 shell. 6.3 millimeters thick, also known as a quarter inch. Real thick boy. Love how it's purple on the inside, just like it is on the outside. Can you see that? It's so like most Trick drums, this is all aluminum. This is not a paint, this is anodized. This will never come off, no matter how hard you try. You can scratch it, run it over with a car, take some sandpaper to it, still purple. It's got their three position throw off. And it's loud as hell. So Trick released these for their 30th anniversary. Only made 30 of these, and we have one of them. So if you wanna give us a call, we'll hook you up. If you want us to ship it to you, head on over to chucklevins.com. Trick Kodiak. Hey guys, we just got a new product in. Uh, it's designed to help prevent the spread of pathogens uh, in and around the area on the bandstand and into the auditorium. It fits right on your, your trumpet bell. They also make it for trombone. It's made of a polypropylene uh, fabric material, which is what they make face masks out of. And it's been proven and tested to actually work very effectively at preventing the spread of germs uh, in, 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 in around the area. It attaches very easily. Has an elastic, it stretches on and goes onto the bell, just like this. And it'll actually uh, allow the air to come through, and of course sound comes through as well. Uh, very, very minimal detectable change in sound, color, or response on the instrument. But basically you can uh, play comfortably and not spread any germs across the room. It's available here at Washington Music Center. Just check our website, www.chucklevins.com. Hey, what's good, friends and family? Guess what? I'm excited, and I hope you are too, because we got some limited edition new gear. And trust me, you want to check this out. This right here is the Record Box DDJ 400 in gold and black. It's looking beautiful. So for all my Record Box users, we got you. Now, for all my Serato users, I did not forget about y'all. Serato Lite comes with the SP3 in this Platinum Chrome Edition, all right? There's only a limited amount of them, so be sure you log on to chucklevins.com or give us a call directly and we'll get yours today. We'll see you soon, family. Cause we're turning up the heat I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets I'm coming in hot and I can't be beat Watch out now Hello world, we're back For another Chuck Levin's Live I'm Adam Levin And welcome to the Chuck Levin's Studio Monitor Room this is a room that many of you might not have seen yet, but it's one of the coolest rooms in the store. Yeah, zoom out. Let them see how awesome this is. We're going to show you around. We're going to talk studio monitors. We're going to talk big, small, different reasons why different things exist, why they're important, all kinds of cool stuff. If you're joining us right now, we have a super cool giveaway as usual. We're giving away a set of the JBL 305P studio monitors these guys right there one of the hottest monitors out there on the market right now they have been out of stock for so long we just got them in stock and we had to give us that away so check the link in the comments enter to win lots of ways to do it hopefully we've been announcing a winner at the end of the stream one of our producers tom behind the scenes might have extended a little longer for you so you might have a little extra time we'll let you know but free doesn't get any better than that Ed Spence, the man, is going to be joining us in just a few seconds. We're closing up the store right now, so he's coming in here. We're going to get going. But while we're waiting for Ed, studio monitors are probably one of my most favorite things to talk about. I absolutely love them. Um, in the world of producing and mixing music and making music, 
Um, they are they are what we base all of our decisions on. These are this is the 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 monitor. This is the, your your big TV screen. This is your your super 4K TV screen. This is what you're going to look at to make decisions on music. Um, they are the window into the music. This is how you're going to listen, critically listen, and inspect music so that you can make your music sound great on all platforms, whether that's going to be on earbuds, whether that's going to be on big headphones, um, whether it's going to be in your car, whether it's going to be on uh, a big PA system in a venue, no matter what, the goal with studio monitors is to make it work on all platforms. So studio monitors in general, the idea with them is that they're not supposed to make music sound good. They're supposed to let you know how the music actually sounds. The best studio monitor in the world does not enhance, it does not color, it does not make the music sound any better than it is. It tells you the truth. What you really want out of a studio monitor is an honest speaker, an honest impression of what's going on. Now we're gonna talk about a lot of different things in here and some speakers in this room might not be the most honest, but there's a reason why, there's a purpose for them. We're gonna talk about a lot of different things. Um, whether you're in a small room, big room, no matter what it is, there's a studio monitor that fits that purpose, that reason. Um, these are tools, um, tools of the trade. Ed, come on in here, get on in here, Ed. Let's go. The man, Ed Spence himself. Yeah, watch that. Let's get you over here, let's get you in. Yeah, Hello. We're live. Hello, everybody. Say hello to Ed, hello world. Hey, how hello, are Ed you? Ed Spence. So, Welcome. Ed, talk to studio monitors. Oh yeah, I love, I love monitors. One of the most important things in the whole studio. I love monitors. Though. I think I think in the world of a studio, <laughs> there's, there's really, two, the two most important things are your interface, mm -hmm. And your studio monitors. Absolutely. Absolutely. These things now, a common thing that we tell a lot of people mm -hmm. is that your signal chain is only as good as the weakest link. Right. You got it, you got it. It's a it's a math equation. Mm -hmm. They both got to stack up. Mm -hmm. So if you got an inexpensive interface, there might be a reason to get a better set of speakers. Sure, it's gonna sound good, mm -hmm. but you're not gonna realize the full potential right. until you really have a good interface and then you can match it up to a good set of speakers. Well, you know, another thought is the bandwidth or the dynamic range that's coming out of whatever box you have. You want to get the best representation of what's in the box of your computer to come out. So if you had like a hundred dollar interface, you can't guarantee that what's coming out of that hundred dollar speaker is equal to with that interface. So you could spend more money for an interface, I mean, for a speaker, to get the full reference of what that box can give you. Yeah. And then use some references because you need to hear what's coming out of that box as much as you can. So I tell people, if you can afford it, spend as much as you can on the monitors. I really do. I oh, mean, um, I was fortunate enough to be exposed to some big people and I see why they spend the money. And when you come in this room, like, this is the number one room in the country. You guys need to come here and take a boat, take a walk, get here by skateboard, whatever. You can get a reference because you get to see with your ears. We have a um, we have a uh, engineer who just retired, Greg Lucas, totally blind. He taught me sound. He said, hey, first thing you gotta do is shut your eyes and listen and see the sound. And we went through speakers after speakers and speakers, and I am a master of it now. But you really need to hear. You can't judge by a hundred dollar speaker. You got to spend some money, and uh, it makes a big difference. Let's talk about. You mentioned something. You said reference, mm -hmm. and I think that's important. I think that you know something that we that when you're going to evaluate a set of speakers for your studio, you got to have one track, one reference, one song that you know. You right. know this thing inside and out. Right. That's your reference track. And you can you go into a room, and that's what you're going to listen to every set of speakers on so you can compare them equally. Correct. You can't be listening to different songs and different speakers. You're going to have all kinds of information. Correct. These are tools. These are very precision-built tools. And so we got to compare them on equal standing. That's correct. we got to make sure that what we're listening to is accurate and that we're hearing all the little details. Are you hearing the... You know, you want a song that has a lot of life to it, that has a lot of 
nuances and interesting things in it. So you can pick all those different things out. You know, my go-to track is usually uh, Daft Punk. Um, what's it called? Give, I forget what it's called. It's the first track on the, on the new Daft Punk album. And it's got guitars, it's got drums, it, real instruments, guitars, drums, bass, <laughs> vocals, all kinds of different stuff. And so I can listen to that on different sets of speakers. And when something else jumps out at me, I know that that speaker is giving me more information. Right. It's telling me more about the music. Mm -hmm. And if that's what's happening, then as an engineer, I know that I'm going to be able to make a different decision based on that speaker. Oh, yeah. So you got it. And, and it's, you've got to have a song that you know. You know, don't just jump into it and listen to a song you've never heard before. Bring your own music. We have a, we have a really cool demo set up here. Mm -hmm. Switch it to, that, to, to show them what we rock here in this demo room. So we had our friends at Whirlwind uh, build us a switcher where we have every set of speakers in this room wired up through here, including some subwoofers. Now we have a CD player, which is probably the best thing that you can that you can listen to, the highest quality, the highest resolution that you can listen to. You can do Bluetooth. We have it. It's not going to be the most accurate representation of the music, but again, it's a reference. So if you're listening to everything equally, it'll work. Um, you can also we have, have an aux cord, so you can just plug in your phone or something else like that. Or if you have a better quality player, that's going to be better off. Um, but this, is, this allows us to switch between speakers as you're listening. So without really impacting the music or starting and stopping the music, we can, we can flex between the different speakers. So you can really hear how it, the, the tools change what you're hearing, what you're, what you're picking up from the speakers. And then you can really hear the difference. You can understand why a speaker is $99. $400, $14,000. And there's a reason why. These things aren't just, this isn't just prices for prices sake. Well, a lot of engineering goes into these things. Oh yeah, like for example, um, two things. One, when I'm a little older, so when we started out, we used Donald Fagan's Flight of a, a Firefly. The Flight of a Firefly was an industry standard that we used for reference. There are some subtleties in that product, in that song, that certain speakers you can't hear. So fast forward today, I'll give you another example. The Star Trek movie. No one knew that there were subharmonic sounds in that recording because in my day, we was listening to it through a one-inch white cone speaker on your television. Yep. When you played it in here, you're like, wait a second. We never heard those sounds. So just because you think you hear what you hear, you don't really know. So I would recommend get um, i always tell people when you come here go to grammy.com get the a grammy winning record of someone of the genre that you're in listen to what the pros do and listen to it here to hear there might be a bell sound that your speakers don't reproduce at all mm -mm. but reverb like i was listening to a track in my car and i had sometimes another thing is volume there's a sweet spot on every speaker and the cheaper speakers, the sweet spot is not at the same. So you have to crank it a little higher or lower to get a good reference. And I, I just happened to tr play this uh, Kurt Franklin track. And I said, let me turn it up because I'm not hearing everything. And I turned it up and I heard all this re reverb detail that I couldn't hear. Yeah. So I had to turn the speakers in my car. It's, uh, it's an Altima. They have pretty good speakers. Most people, so I have people who buy cars based on the speakers. So. You have to find the sweet spot of the speaker, but you need to get a good reference. And I try to pick the best there is. So I go to Grammy.com, yep. and I'll go Adele. She won all those Grammys a year. I grabbed her song, and I wanted to listen to it because I wanted to hear the detail. Because if you have a cheap speaker, it's not going to reproduce those things. And another thing is volume. Play that little volume. What do you hear? Crank it up. If you start hearing colors, then you know that that amplifier is not able to reproduce it evenly. Yeah. So you're missing things. So that's a big problem. Big And a big job of studio monitors is to make sure that at low volumes or at these volumes that you're really be able to hear what's going on in the music. You need to be able to hear the end of that reverb tail. Correct. You need to hear the, the splash and the decay of a cymbal or the crack of a, of a snare drum. Right. You know, you need to be able to hear that in addition to hearing those subharmonic frequencies. Correct. You know, not just the punch of the kick, but the, the, the tone of the kick drum. Correct. Can you really hear that? And then are you going to be making decisions based on that? So that's the job of all these tools around us. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of studios, you'll also see that 
they generally have more than one set of speakers. Oh yeah, you have to. You, you got to be able to make sure the idea is translation. You mentioned your car. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always a good idea mm -hmm. to check a mix on as many speakers as you can mm -hmm. to make sure that it's going to sound good no matter who's going to listen to it. Mm -hmm. That song, that Adele song or whatever song you're going to crank, it's got to sound good on your your Apple AirPods. Mm -hmm. It's got to sound good in your car. It's got to sound good coming out of your phone just with mm -hmm. friends. It's got to sound good in a big sound, you know, big speaker system. Mm -hmm. And everyone's got to enjoy it. That's the mark of a really great produced song. Right. So mm -hmm. the idea with these speakers is to make sure that it's going to sound good across all platforms. The best speaker in the room is the one that's going to make sure that if it sounds right on that speaker, it's going to sound good everywhere. Right. And, and another thing is, depending on the price point in the manufacturer, not every speaker sounds great on every style of music. That's right. So, so like, for example, can I mention a brand? Yeah, we're in. Okay. We're in. We're gonna do okay. It. So, for example, uh, Genelec, for example. When you see Genelex, where do you see them? You see them in film. All the professionals, 5.1. You see them in uh, certain Nashville guitars. You listen to the detail. When you sing, think of Focal, you see them in more urban environments because they are designed more to tailored to that low end, like barefoots. Now, there are certain speakers that are even no matter what you do. You got to spend money for those. So if you're on a budget, try to find the brand that caters to your genre of music better than the other ones. This way you don't have to work so hard. Um, like for example, a lot of hip hop guys, they all have KRKs. Yeah, I think I think let's let's get into some speakers and let's talk about why they exist, why they're cool. Okay. Like mm -hmm. what's up. So I think let's start you mentioned KRK. So let's start over here. Mm -hmm. KRK. Right here. They just came out with their Gen 4 set of speakers, which actually I think are like mm -hmm. rocking. No, they're doing great. KRKs have been out for a number of years. Um, back in the day, uh, Dark Child they, the, the, he was an artist of them, and he showed his room, and he had like 20 pairs of KRKs. So all the brotherhood were buying KRKs because Rodney Jerkins, Dark Child. And, but there's been a, in this industry standard for hip hop and R&B for a number of reasons. They have a lot of low end. A lot of low end. They got this front port here, so that bass frequency is coming right out the front, hitting you in the right. face. They don't, they don't crack, they don't, you don't blow tweeters as fast as, like, as the NS10Ms. And they're relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Now, are they reference monitors? Yes and no. I would say no for the music I do, but for some people, they're able to know what that speaker is doing and know that it's giving you a little bit more bass than what's on your track. Now, when you're producing, you know, if you're producing music, maybe not right. mixing the music, right. but you're creating the music. Absolutely. DJs love them. It's, um, it's because good. it's exciting, you know. Right. So this speaker, it has a sound. It's not the flattest speaker in the world. It definitely has got that bump in that low end but for a reason, mm -hmm. and that's why they exist. Mm -hmm. DJs will put them up on, the, on top of their DJ controllers because when you're producing, you want this thing to pump you up and sound awesome. Gotta feel it. So if you feel it there, you know it's gonna sound good in a club. Absolutely. Because club's got a lot of bass too. Absolutely. So it translates to that purpose, right? right. It's, it's purpose built for those, for that music, those customers, that type of music, it works. Right. And I'll tell you what, normally, K, like older generations of KRK, they were really bass heavy and very little high end definition. Right. G4, they killed it. Yeah, they, everyone is uh, competing against everyone now. So, like for example, let me go right back. The KRK 12 SHO sub is still the industry standard sub. It weighs 120, you see that like thing? 110 pounds. This thing will, will uh, rock <laughs> your clothes off. This that thing is, is a monster. Because because most studios need a player a pair of playbacks. When you're doing urban music, um, DJing, you want to feel it. So back in the day, we would sell people PA speakers. Yeah. They would have a pair of speakers, and then if they want to crank it, PA speakers. Uh, Serwin Vegas back in the day. Or you get the, the, the Kara K12HO. But now because of the transition in quality, there's a different reference. Yeah. So everyone is trying to match that now. The NS10M was the industry standard. And that represented an era that doesn't exist now. Well, let's talk about the NS10M for a second. So mm -hmm. the Yamaha NS10M, which is on probably some of the, in the biggest studios in the world, mm -hmm. you've all seen this speaker. It looks just like this. Yep. It looks just like this speaker here. All right. So the NS10M was originally made by Yamaha. It's been discontinued for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Aventone, our friends at Aventone, 
Um, they originally were making just the components for the speaker because people had them and they could not source the materials to replace them. You, you can't buy new ones, mm -hmm. so they had to buy new drivers or woofers to make them sound, to, if they blew them out or something like that, they had to make them work. And you couldn't get them from anywhere. Right. So they were making mm -hmm. those and they were incredibly popular. And so Aventone was smart enough. They, they paired with uh, Chris Lord Algae, mm -hmm. phenomenal rock engineer, made some of the heaviest hitting rock songs albums of all time. Mm -hmm. Um, and they came out with the CLA-10s and the CLA-10As, the active ones. These right here are passive, so you need to, power, you need to match them up with an amp. Um, but the whole idea with these speakers is, they're, and anyone will tell you, they're not the best sounding speakers in the world. In fact, they don't sound that great at all. Well, they're very mid-range. Mm -hmm. the, the vocals jump out. The guitars jump mm -hmm. out. That's why rock guys love them. But if they sound good there, if you can hear the lows, if you can hear the highs, and that mid-range sounds tight, it's gonna translate. It's just, it's a tool, it's gonna work. That set of speakers does not sound good, but man, if it sounds good there, you did it. Let me tell you the story about them. The NS10M is a home speaker. It wasn't designed for the recording industry at all. The studio engineers went to a local store to buy a pair of home speakers for reference. That's it. And that was the reference speaker of its era. And because that era was so long and all the hot top guys had it in their house, monkey see what monkey do, it became a standard. So now these young kids are walking, I need the NS10, they don't understand that why it became so popular. They were never meant to be recording speakers. They were just a pair of home speakers. Like you would go buy a television and stick it in your studio because you want to hear how your record sounded through the television. Yep. Back in the day, that was the refer refer reference. Today's reference does not look like an NS10M. Look at what speakers you have in your house. You probably don't because your television is your reference. Or you have a Sonos or, or, a, or a sound Sonos. bar. Right, or sound like bar. The, the, or your earbuds. So the reference has changed. Yeah. So you have to be careful when you're following somebody. Yeah. Why are you buying these speakers? Are you buying because you saw them in the hit factory or you saw it's your friend's house? Don't just buy them because you saw them. You need to understand the why to appreciate. They're a tool. They're a tool to give you a reference. It's almost like buying the Oratones. Yep. Oratones. So let's talk about Oratones for a second because we've got them right here. So Oratones, mm -hmm. these are the speakers that you'd see on Quincy Jones' desk yep. when he's mixing Michael Jackson. Same thing. Reference. This is the, the reference, excuse my French, the reference shitty speaker. Yep. This is it, okay? This is a single driver, four and a half inch speaker mm -hmm. that there, there is no two way design to this. There's no tweeter and a woofer. It's mm -hmm. one speaker. So you're trying to cram all those frequencies, the lows, the mids, the highs through one tiny little speaker. Mm -hmm. But what that gives you is the industry standard for the tiniest set of speakers someone's going to listen to. Correct. That's, that is your tiny little earbuds. Mm -hmm. Those are your $15 earbuds that a kid's going to be listening to on the way to school something along those lines right that's so if it sounds good there you've made sure that you know you're going to check you're going to probably make your music on a set of krks but you're going to check it against a set of oratones like to make sure that it mode. sounds good it's on right. the little guy but it's going to it's going to bump when you want to play it louder that's right you don't crank them they're not designed to be played loud it's just for listening uh it's just you want to hear the music through a, a, a mono source so that you can get a good representation of the balance of your mix, the vocal, where, they, where they're sitting. So we're talking about using multiple set of speakers in a studio. So to do that, if you're going to be checking different sets of speakers, you need a, a way to send the signal from your interface mm -hmm. out to different set of speakers and switch them. Because not everyone's going to have a super switcher like we have over here to switch between 45 set of speakers. So you get something like this, which is this one's the Personas Monitor Station V2. There's all different types of these. Personas is a great, affordable one. Um, it doesn't break the bank, but it sounds good. It, yep. the, again, sounding good in studio world means it doesn't change the sound. Right. It's honest. It lets the signal pass through, and it doesn't change it. Correct. So this is going to let you switch from your, your KRKs to your Oratones, three, four. your, your mm -hmm. Barefoots to your KRKs to your Oratones, whatever you want to do mm -hmm. so you can check three different things. That's what these are designed for. Mm -hmm. There's... This one's made by Mackie. You might have heard of the Big Knob. Um, we have a line called Heritage Audio, which is made in Spain, which is beautiful, oh. amazing, mm -hmm. incredibly well-built stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that even has a Bluetooth channel on it so that you can actually Bluetooth audio to it if you want to check a reference. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, Probably the industry standard is Dangerous Audio. 
Dangerous is one of the top ones, but the Heritage does the same the thing. The Heritage for, for, for less money. For a couple hundred money. bucks less yeah, is a, yeah. a really choice piece. Yeah, the Heritage is uh, really System 2000. Ram System, Ram System 2000. 2000. It's awesome. awesome. Big awesome. red knob, looks like a knee console. Absolutely. It's hot. Um, let's keep going around this room. So the next set of speakers we got in the room over here is made by Adam Audio. Mm -hmm. Adam Audio has... They have not had to change their design of a speaker mm -mm. in years. Right. And for good reason. Mm -hmm. The A7X is probably one of the most popular speakers on the planet. Yep. Um, tight, the Ace and the 7. So, so let's talk about the size of speakers for a second. The bigger the speaker, the lower the frequency. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most speakers in this room are two way speakers. They have a top, a high frequency driver, and then a mid bass driver. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the job of the speaker is to produce the full frequency spectrum from 20 hertz, which is the lowest that human ears can supposed to be able to hear, mm -hmm. to 20,000 hertz, which is supposed to be what people can hear. Mm -hmm. Most of us can't hear that well anymore, yep. but that's the job of the speakers. So the reason you separate the two is so that you let the high frequencies focus on moving mm -hmm. high frequency stuff. Yep. It's very fast, mm -hmm. um, very fast response and very hot. You know, this is the upper end of the the bright sound, and then the bass, that takes a lot of energy. So it needs a dedicated speaker to move that air so that you can hear what's going on. Mm -hmm. So that's why most speakers in this room have a sort of two-way design. Um, a lot of speakers also will have some sort of port system. You know, if it's a closed box, um, you need to be a, a, a very well-designed speaker to be able mm -hmm. to contain the bass. There's, when you push air out, there's also movement going on inside the box. So you got to be able to kind of contain that sound, tame that sound, so that you don't hear the box. Mm -hmm. The best speaker, you hear what you're supposed to hear. You're not hearing a boxy sound. Mm -hmm. You're not hearing any other artifacts of the speaker. So Adam Audio went with this ribbon tweeter design, which is one of the brightest, airiest, most mm -hmm. open sounding mm -hmm. kind of speakers of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna, it's never gonna scoop off the highs. This is like one of the best representations you can get if you're doing, and they're incredibly popular in Nashville these days mm -hmm. for mixing, you know, rock and guitar and acoustic mm -hmm. guitar. So you can really hear the brightness, the shimmeriness of the guitar. Yep. Mm -hmm. These are beautiful sounding speakers, um, but they bump too. Yeah, and the, the ribbon design is a characteristic of a certain character of, of sound that you can get uh, for the highs. Uh, it's, it doesn't wear you out fatigue wise right. over long periods of time. And the front port is good for people who are in conditions where you have a flat wall behind you and you're trying to eliminate all that extra standing bass waves. So a front port, and then also a lot of people can't afford three or four pairs of speakers. So you try to find a one box fits all. And the A7 was rated the best speaker of all for years. Years. Still was, is. Yeah. And like it's always in the yeah. top list of yeah. best speakers yeah. out yeah. there. Yeah. And Doesn't matter amazing. what type of music you're doing, for I think it's 1500 bucks for a pair. Yeah. There's no problem with a set of speakers like that. And what's amazing is they make a lot of other speakers, but the A7 was like the one. They make an eight, they make a five, they right. make a three. And the so you have seven to is to the it. one. Because the eight had a little bit too much bass response. Yeah. And it was overkill for most people. So the seven became the sweet spot. Um, so for many years, we were selling the A7s. And what happened was because, what ha let me give you a little story. So the KRK, the event 2020s, mm -hmm. which they don't make them anymore. Yeah. Um, they were the industry standard. Before that, it was the Tannoys and different ones. So now the A7 became the standard. So all the manufacturers had to retool to compete against the A7. And then, uh, and then Adam went out of business quickly for a little bit, and then they came back. And once you get out of the industry, you kind of lose the industry. So they had to come back, and they're still amazing speakers. Now they're back. I mean, they're kicking they, it they, now. They're right back because they didn't have to change. Yeah. They just had to let people know they were back. Right. And so what, what happened is everyone's trying to beat them and compete with them. And that's what happened now. That's why there's so many speakers, and they all have a similar design. But the front port is good for people who don't have their rooms treated right. And you're trying to make the best there is, you know, not everyone can afford a, a room that's not. You know, imagine you buy an apartment, say, well, these are square, these are parallel walls. Uh, I can't have parallel walls, so I want you to redesign my apartment. You can't do that. No. So, so when you try to find a speaker that help you compensate for the fact that your ceiling is low, or that you, you are right next to a wall, whereas if you look at many studios, no speaker is right next to a wall in the studio. Yeah. So 
you sometimes you can't do that. So you try to find a speaker that can help you compensate for what you don't have. And some of these speakers actually have pretty cool tools on the back that can kind of like EQ the bass individually from the high frequency mm -hmm. so that if in your room, your room, all rooms have a sound. And actually we'll talk about that when we get back to Genelec in a minute because they mm -hmm. have a really cool solution to solve for that problem. Mm -hmm. But a lot of speakers will have some slight tools on the back of the speaker to adjust. Maybe your room is a little bit boomy. Mm -hmm. You need to cut that bass down a little bit so that you still get that honest answer. Right. Or maybe your room is really bright. Maybe you've got some windows in it and there's high frequencies kind of bouncing around. You need to tame that low end down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So again, so that it balances out so you hear a level, mm -hmm. honest, even sound, a flat sound. Adam Audio, uh, I think in the last two years, came out with the T-Series, mm -hmm. which is their new uh, lower cost, but still very similar design speaker. Um, they still use that ribbon tweeter design. Um, and, they, and right here, we got the T7 beneath it. So it's kind of the little brother. Um, if you're on a budget, but you want that ribbon, that really open, mm -hmm. you know, that open, honest, high-end sound, mm -hmm. T-Series is killing it. Yep. Incredible set of speakers without breaking the bank. Mm -hmm. Um, next over here, we have the JBL three series, mm -hmm. which is by the way, giveaway, uh -oh. we're giving them away oh, wow. a set of 305 P's. If you haven't already entered links are in the comment on the comments right now, right yeah. now. get in there, check it out. Enter for me too. Okay. Um, enter to win. I won. We're giving away, <laughs> we're giving away a pair of JBL 305 That's P's, awesome. which is a monster awesome. set of speakers. Yes, it is. So. The three series, mm -hmm. I think, is mm -hmm. one of the best entry level. And mm -hmm. entry level, I mean, in terms of price point, because yes. they are pro speakers. Yes. They sound incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I think the best, I mean, they, so right here we have the five, which is the one that we're giving away, little guy. Really nice. They make a six and they make an eight. Mm -hmm. So a five inch woofer, a six inch woofer, an eight inch woofer. Okay, the key difference in those five inches, six inches, eight inches. The bigger the speaker, the lower frequencies it can produce. That's why subwoofers exist, all right? So if you have an eight inch speaker, you're gonna get a lot more of that low, that subharmonic, that low end frequency, the boom out of a, yep. out of a kick drum. Yep. Or if you're doing EDM music, that really that's that hard driving sub bass kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You want those bigger speakers if you're making that kind of music. Mm -hmm. If you're doing jazz, if you're doing uh, a gospel, you might not need a, a huge speaker. Right. So that, cause you're probably doing a lot of vocals, a lot of maybe acoustic uh, music. You don't need incredible bottom end, you need detail and clarity. I think the best part about these speakers, one, uh, in our world, the, the, the domes are crush proof. Yes. So you can poke them and they don't uh, crush in like other speakers. Child friendly. In a, yeah, child friendly and in a store. Oh, I love them. I love them. I love them. Everybody just wants to come up and just poke. They just want to poke the speaker. We had a customer. Look at that. They, they just they want to poke it. You we know what? A, that does we nothing. Had, no, no. We had a customer that would come to the store, and I, I think he had his special needs. So you really, we don't mention his name, but he would look at the speaker and just poke it in. And then we had another customer who was, I think, autistic that couldn't handle that it was poked in, and he would put his mouth on the speaker and suck it out. So I ha I've seen both extremes. Look, here's the here's the thing, okay? <laughs> Most of these speakers, it doesn't really matter, no. okay? Because it's it's really just dust cover. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really have an impact if it's crushed or not. No. It just drives me nuts. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. what I will say is, what's going on around the dome, okay, is they have what's called a waveguide system. Yes. If you look at it, if you could, if you can get close to it, I don't know how close you can see here, but if you look at a set of these speakers, you see this really intricate design right here around the dome, and what that's doing is that is, that is uh, spreading out the high frequencies in such mm -hmm. a way that makes it so that the sweet spot where the speaker sounds right is very wide and very accurate. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is imaging, mm -hmm. okay? Imaging, when you're, when you're listening to a set of speakers, imaging is when you can hear the difference between left and right. Mm -hmm. When you can hear a sound and it bounces back and forth, okay, and you, and you can tell, oh wow, that's really over here. The Beatles used to love messing with stereo imaging. Mm -hmm. If you listen to a, a, one of the Beatles tracks on a really good set of headphones, it is a wide sound. It is out there. So a good set of speakers, you'll be able to pick that out in a room, which is not always easy. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to a not such a good set of speakers, it sounds like a wall of sound. Mm -hmm. If you listen to a good set of speakers, you can tell that's on the left side, that's on the right side. And that's important. So the JBL 3 series, they borrowed that waveguide system from their super speakers, the M series, the M2s, which are their 
massive giant floor standing speakers that cost tens of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. This is the same waveguide system in those speakers. Another set of speakers that we got here that has a great waveguide system are the new Personas Eris XT series mm -hmm. from our friends down in, uh, in Louisiana. So um, another affordable, not quite as booming, really honest, good for rock, good for jazz, mm -hmm. um, being, being Voice in voiceover, voiceover work, schools, podcasting, podcasting, school stuff. Yeah. Um, the imaging, they have a really mm -hmm. wide waveguide, so that's going to give you a nice, wide, sweet spot. So that means that if you are in a room and you got someone with you in the, you know, in, in the in the production room with you, mm -hmm. they could be standing behind you and they're still going to get a good impression of the sound. Some speakers are very laser focused. You need to be in that sweet spot, or you're not going to get a good idea of what's going on. Right. Persona mm -hmm. speakers have a nice, wide, sweet spot, so that no matter where you are in that room. You're getting a good impression of what's going on. You can mm -hmm. hear the difference between left and right. You're hearing the high frequencies right. You're hearing that detail. So it's key. Yep. Really important in a set of speakers. We also down here have another set of uh, Persona speakers, the Eris, um, the E44. And the 66s, which are the first set of three-way three speakers way. that we're going to talk mm -hmm. about here. So we talked about two-way. Three-way means there's another driver there mm -hmm. that can dedicate to another set of frequencies. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means that now we have a set of speakers that's focusing, uh, one driver that's focusing on the low end, one driver that's focusing on the mid-range, and one speaker that's focusing on the high end. Mm -hmm. That means that you're going to be able to hear more detail. Right. Each speaker is now working on a more focused set of frequencies, mm -hmm. so each one can work harder to reproduce that set of frequencies better. That's correct. Really cool stuff. So you start to see as we kind of get into some of the higher end stuff in this room, they got all kinds of drivers all over the place. And that's to give you a deeper inspection into what's going on, a deeper uh, uh, view. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's going from your, from, your, from your old school TV mm -hmm. to your 8K TV, right. where you can see every pore on your head. It's going from 720p to 1080p, right? right? Now you can see all the little details, mm -hmm. all the little hairs on someone's face. Mm -hmm. That's the difference in going from a, a two-way design to a three-way design. You're getting more detail out of the same information. Right. Cool stuff. Um, also incredibly popular. And they made these with intent to look this way. To replace. Because we looked at, we, mm -hmm. Yamaha was trying to replace the, the desire for the NS10M. Mm -hmm. so they came out with the HS series. Right. So right here we have the HS5 uh, and the HS8 probably. Mm -hmm. yep. um, these have a silk, a silk uh, um, woofer, mm -hmm. which, which is a very smooth sound. Mm -hmm. Really nice, really clean, really honest, mm -hmm. and really affordable. And it has a lot of the low end too. So a lot of people are using those as a one-stop one shop. So what's happening is there are a lot of competition out there. Yamaha set the bar with the NS10M and they can't make it anymore. So they came out with the HS series. But what they did was because, the, again, the reference has changed. So now you can add more lower end. And so the HS8s and the HS5 and the 7s they have a lo lot more bottom end. And some people are surprised. Most people only buy the 5s or the 8s. And I had a customer, I said, well, why don't you try the 7s? He said, I, I got to have an 8. I said, but you have a small space. And so he says, you know what, let me try the sevens. And he bought the sevens on my, my recommendation and came back and he said, I couldn't believe, I would have never thought of the seven because of perception. And he said, those HS sevens actually have the low end that I need for, for my music. And so don't rule out a seven inch speaker if the company makes one, because it gives you a lot of low end. And, it, and again, let's be real. Most people are not living in a huge house. Most people live in a small space. And if you're married, you got family, that means that you're crunched up in a little corner somewhere and you're just trying to survive. You're in, you have your own pandemic with your family. And so you're trying to find a space. So don't feel pressure that, or that I got a five inch speaker. No, today's speakers have a lot of low end. Yeah, and, and, and there is such a thing as having too big a set of speakers. You, too it, much. It, will, it will bury you. If, you, if, if your mix is muddy, if, if you're listening to music and it's too bass heavy, that, that can be a bad thing. Yeah, and if you and some people live in apartments and you can't crank it up. Yeah. So you have to make concessions. So let's say you're on a limited budget, all right, and you have uh, thin walls. So you're going to get a five-inch speaker, okay, no, no matter what. 
compensate that with maybe a three or four hundred dollar pair of headphones. Yeah. You know, so that you have a reference. This is this is where we're living That's in today. It. And if you you know you got your wife, I got guys who have studios in their in their bedrooms. The wife is giving them a corner, and I said, well, you got to make it work. While your wife is watching HGTV downstairs, you can do music. You can't crank it up. Get a five-inch speaker. And if you want to spend more money, you can get you a nice JBL. I mean, a Genelec or we have some high-end five-inch five, five inch speakers. There's nothing wrong with a set of fives. And we're going to talk about those oh, Genelecs oh. in a second. Before we go to that side of the room, there's one other set of speakers I want to hit on, which are these Neumanns right here. Oh, yeah. Cage. The Cage 310s. Yes, sir. So this is probably one of the best three-way speakers out there. Um, this was originally the Klein and Hummels. Um, and then Neumann took the design and kind of improved upon it. Mm -hmm. They did a lot. I was reading about it more or less like getting ready for this. They did a, a ton of engineering for this mid-range driver right here. This is going to be one of the best representations for vocals, for guitars. I mean, it's a, it's a great sounding speaker. It's got a nice big woofer here for the low end, nice high frequencies, great waveguide system here. Mm -hmm. But this mid-range is... A plus. Mixing. Mixing. This is an incredible tool for mixing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working with a, we're working with one of our good customers down in Nashville, Mike Monsoor. Mm -hmm. He's going with the bigger, the bigger Neumanns, the KH420s, mm -hmm. but they still use the same sort of technology. It's an incredible mastering level tool. It's a mm -hmm. great box, mm -hmm. a great set of speakers. Neumanns, great company. Incredible company. I mean, a lot of their stuff is made in like super clean rooms. Like these are, this is German engineering mm -hmm. at its finest. This is the real deal stuff. Now, let me say one thing, boss. You cannot quantify the speaker based on the volume. Not every speaker is designed for you to crank at this maximum volume. Yeah. So if you want, you got to know who you are. If you want loud, we will sell you a loud speaker. And there are plenty of them. But don't buy, a, like a Neumann mic is not, I mean, speaker is not something I would say is when you're going to crank at large volumes. But it's going to give you an incredible representation. And they sound good they at low volumes. They sound volumes. great at low volumes and, and medium volume. So three-way, monster's choice. Let's stick with Neumann for a second and talk about these little guys. Oh, yeah. These guys here are the KH80s, the little baby desktop speakers. Mm -hmm. I promise you, world, you've never heard a, a, a set of speakers this small sound so huge. Correct. Right. The low end that comes out of these things is crazy. And you can see... Just like the KRKs, they got that front port. Mm -hmm. That's to make sure that in, in the position that you're going to be in, you're going to get that low-end information. Mm -hmm. You can be at a computer desk, monitor right there, and you can put these speakers up there. And this is pro-level mixing quality yes. in an incredibly small package. you got a tiny space to work, but you want to really do it right. Mm -hmm. Neumann KH80s is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Something else while we're on it, you can see that these speakers are on these foam pieces right here. Little foam inserts um there are a lot of different ways of playing this game right here but this is an important this is a this this is a, a, a basically like sound absorption like we have in this room that you put underneath the speaker and it decouples the speaker from the table speakers vibrate the woofers and the speakers are vibrating so that most speakers will vibrate and if it's sitting just sitting flat on a desk it could vibrate the desk too mm -hmm. and when something is vibrating just like a guitar vibrates, it makes, sound. It, ma it makes a sound. You might not hear it or, or notice that you're hearing it, but it is impacting your decision-making abilities. It is changing the way that you are perceiving that sound, and you're going to make a decision based off what you've heard, and you're going to take it to your car and be like, this sounds completely different. It also cancels frequencies. So you, you want to make sure, I mean, the design level that went into these speakers was incredible. You want to make sure that you're getting the most out of the speaker and not you're not compromising that sound. So it can be as simple as putting, you know, Oralex, um, Oralex makes these. Um, um, Isoacoustics, Isoacoustics makes Acoustics. incredible ones. Yeah. Um, Onstage makes affordable ones. Gator makes affordable ones. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. to separate your speakers from the table they're sitting on mm -hmm. is incredibly important. Um, yeah. Do not sleep on that. It's just like the interface. It's just like the cables. Mm -hmm. These little details will maximize your speakers yeah. and make it a, a totally different experience. Yeah. Super important. We had a test at NAMM um, January before the pandemic where they had the, the, um, the what were we using? They were using the Focal, the Focal, yeah, the the Focal trio. trio 11s. One on a coupler. They had the isopop. One without. And they they asked us to pick which one sounded the difference. 
the difference was night and day. Completely different. It was so. I, I think I went and grabbed. We were there. Yeah, yeah I grabbed it. So Adam, he, you got hit he ran across the room and said, "Adam, you got to come hear this thing." It sounded like Man, a let different. Me see those it there. sounded like a different speaker, because what happens is the sound cancels the vibration, cancels frequencies, and you need to separate that. So here's an example of some killer ones. Mm -hmm. Isoacoustics, which are the ones that make the puck, mm -hmm. they've been known for these kind of like little towers here. They're almost like Nike shocks. Right. right? You right. remember the Nike shock shoes, the hottest shoes on the planet? Yep. Yeah, like those. So they're basically like little uh, rubber uh, um, springs almost right. that completely separate the vibrations from the speaker from the desk. Mm -hmm. The desk doesn't get any of that response. Correct. And the speakers do what they're supposed to do. It's like they're, they're floating in That's air. That's correct. Incredibly important. And the Genelex come with the motor. Incredibly motor. important. It's Gotta that have simple. It. Boom. Super Gotta simple. have it. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Genelex since we're over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We talked about the room. Mm -hmm. Rooms have a sound. Oh, yeah. Okay. Your room can, if you walk, if you played a set of speakers in a room and you walked around a room, it's going to sound completely different all the way around the room. In some spaces, the noise will be quieter. Maybe the bass is gone. Mm -hmm. Maybe the high frequencies stack up and it's really bright. Mm -hmm. So a room can totally impact the way a speaker's perceived. In this room here, we've done our best. It's a strange room. But if you look around the room, we got these panels on the wall made by Oralex mm -hmm. um, to kind of absorb the sound or diffuse the sound so that the sound's not just bouncing off of hard walls, it's getting absorbed into these soft panels. There's a lot of tips and tricks. That, that could be a whole other stream that we go into talk about sound absorption, mm -hmm. but it's important. Now, Genelec, okay? A tried and true brand. Oh, yeah. They are in a ton of professional studios in a lot of different ways. They're, they have a technology that goes into their systems called SAM, which is their room correction system. Yep. SAM, mm -hmm. okay? So their room correction system is, I think, one of the most important like developments in speaker technology that there is. Mm -hmm. When you buy a set of SAM speakers, you buy the GLM kit. You get this little microphone that goes that's that's designed to work with these speakers specifically. And what it does is it listens, it'll play certain tones out of the speakers, and the microphone will listen back and it will listen to the room. It will, it will understand, oh, this room is bright, or this room has issues here, 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 here. Mm -hmm. And then once you're once it's done listening, it corrects the speakers to sound right in that room. I talk to I talk to people buying all kinds of speakers all the time. Mm -hmm. And if they don't know how the room sounds, if they're not sure if they're in a good room or not, or maybe they're gonna be moving mm -hmm. soon, mm -hmm. or the room is weird and they're like, you know, I think it's a good room, but they want to play on a really high level, I say, stop right there. Go with the Genelec SAM system mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter what your room sounds like anymore. Right. It's gonna sound right. right. It's not about sounding hyped. Right. It's about sounding precise. Right. And Genelec really has that down. They really doesn't matter if you're getting the little 8330s, which I'll be damned if these things won't blow you away. These little these little five inch guys mm -hmm. will crush. Mm -hmm. They have this as a as a stereo setup, the 8330. Uh, stereo SAM system. Mm -hmm. They also have the L, uh, 8330 LSE mm -hmm. triple SAM system, which comes with a little with a little subwoofer. Mm -hmm. And that system, it is hard to beat that system for the price they ask for it. It is really substantial and it is super cool. The other cool thing about it, we were talking about, you talked about um, having talent speakers, right? Mm -hmm. Speakers, when you're going to bring in your artist and you want them to hear the song and get excited about it, mm -hmm. maybe you're in a bigger room and maybe you've got a couch in the back of the room for the talent and you sit up in the mix position. Genelec actually, through the computer software that manages it, you can move the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. So you can have the sweet spot be right in the in the mix position, and then you can flip it and say, you know what, I need my talent to hear it, how it's going to sound, and boom, that sweet spot's back in that couch position. That's correct. It's a crazy setup. And the cool thing about Genelec over some of the other brands, like there's the IK Arc system, that um, it's a room correction system that um, what it does is a similar thing, but what happens is it creates a, a VST preset that you have to put on your mix bus. And I always tell people when I sell this, you have to make a you have to make some kind of note to remember to take that off on mix down because it only applies to your room. So the general, like you don't have to worry about that because it records the data in the speaker. In the speakers. The speaker, it's stored in the speaker. And let's say you are an engineer and you travel. This is the only speaker you can buy because you can take this in the GLM kit anywhere in the world 
whoop, scans the room, done. Now you as sound as if you're back in your space. There's no difference. It's unreal. Yeah. If it's you're unreal. if you're traveling, if you if you're moving, if you are always on the go, you could literally fit these in a backpack with the microphone system, and, and no, you could be in a hotel room. Correct. You could be in a mm -hmm. basement. It doesn't matter. It's gonna make the speakers sound right. And, and it's grills. There's metal grills anywhere, so people travel with them. You don't have to worry about them getting banged up. Um, it's an amazing speaker. It's a high-end speaker. It's a little expensive, but it's worth every penny. I just ordered a pair. I got the uh, 8341s coming. I think it's supposed to come today. Big I can't boys. wait. I can't wait. Uh, it took me, look, I'm 56. It took me a long time, okay? I've saved $5 a week, okay? <laughs> Take the time, okay? You can afford them. Just give yourself some time. But the Genelex are amazing. Now, I also have other speakers, but I needed a pure reference. Yeah, pure reference. That's, that's pure, really what Genelex is about. That's it. Next to the, Gen the 8330s, we have the, 80, the big boys, the 8350s. These 50s. are their big 8-inch ones. So, mm. it, well, like we talked about, bigger woofers, more low-end, phenomenal speakers, same design. It's just more speaker. Yeah, and people use this. Whenever you see 5.1 anywhere... It's always uh, general. Life. And that's actually something important. You know, these speakers have a digital control setup, right? Mm -hmm. They they can maximize. It's, it's not easy to set up a good sounding 5.1. You mm -hmm. can't just put five speakers in a room Correct. and a subwoofer and say, I got it, 5.1. That's not right. It's a very specific setup designed for film, designed for mixing a yep. specific type of audio. Dolby Atmos. You, at, mm. Atmos systems. Genelec, man. Always Genelec. Speakers, mm. it, it'll tune the room to be right for the purpose. That's mm -hmm. correct. Incredibly important stuff. Um, let's talk Focal since we're on this wall. Yep, yep. So, um, probably the hottest thing to come out from Focal in the last year has been, the last couple years has been the Shape series. Shapes. Mm -hmm. So the Shape series are these guys right here. They're made in France. Mm -hmm. um, they look super awesome. They use a, what I was reading about, it's, it's like a glass and flaxseed woofer. Mm -hmm. So these are hard, but really light. Mm -hmm. So they respond really quickly. So you're going to get really incredible detail. Um, Focal's known for their tweeters. Mm -hmm. Really high end, really high impact, great tweeters mm -hmm. for really incredible, precise detail, great imaging. And the Shape series uses uh, these, it, it almost looks like subwoofers on the sides. These are not subwoofers. Some speakers we're going to get to in a minute actually have subwoofers on the sides. Passive. These are mm -hmm. passive radiators. Mm -hmm. So these are really just kind of letting the bass inside the speaker breathe, right. move so you can hear it. These speakers are designed so that you can actually be right up against a wall. Mm -hmm. You can have in this. This is another set of speakers that if you're in a tiny room, but you want a really high mm -hmm. end level of speakers, they make little itty bitty guys, little itty bitty guys. I don't know if you can they see this right here. Amazing, too. Little guys I can hold it in one hand if I wasn't mm -hmm. pulling it off the wall. Mm -hmm. They make an intermediate size. Mm -hmm. They make the 65s, which is probably the most popular. Mm -hmm. And then they also make the shape twins. Again, this is another three a three way design. A little bit two grand. They sound amazing. Home run. Absolutely. So if you're on a budget, like if everyone wants to be like Mike, the barefoots are Mike. That's the industry standard. Okay. The Mini Man 12s, the twelve thousand dollar speakers. So what what I do is I have an app on my phone. Um, I have a, uh, a it's an RTA, and I have a, a meter, sound pressure meter, also, but an RTA. And when I'm playing through the different speakers, I listen, I look at my RTA to see the frequency response. And I couldn't believe that the Focals, like even the Alpha 80s, which the little cheaper ones, they go down as low as the Barefoots. Yeah. They're not as loud. And not as much detail. No. But, but it's a great set of speakers for, for the money. Low, if you want low end and you want a budget, you want Focal. So let's, let's talk about Barefoot for a second because they've, they've earned their place oh, in the yeah. world. Absolutely. They've quickly become the industry standard yep. on the high end of speakers. Yes, sir. All right. They, they're, you are hard pressed to see a, a studio out there where you're not seeing this now iconic silver face plate on a set of speakers. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes sense to start with the big boys and then we can get down to the footprints, which are crushing it right now. Mm -hmm. So Barefoot, made in Oregon, super cool company. I've been to the factory. It is amazing the level of detail they've gone to to develop these speakers. Mm -hmm. Thomas Barefoot, hence the name. Nice guy too. Super mm -hmm. awesome guy, super accessible too. If you have questions about speakers, mm -hmm. he's out there. You can talk he, to him. He will talk to you. Yep. Don't just call him up, but you know what? If you needed it, if, you had a, if you're serious and you have a question about speaker design, he is the man. He is a real wizard of making speakers and he really, what they've done, no expense spared, 
they overbuilt and made the most tank level speakers you can make. A couple things about these things that I think make them like untouchable in a lot of ways. They're incredibly heavy, okay? So you're, you're, they are absorbing a lot of this vibration that's going on. You're not gonna get that, that, that cabinet sound, okay? It's getting absorbed in there. Every, almost every set of barefoot speakers has dual firing subwoofers, real true subwoofers, okay? These things fire at the same time, like that. And what that does is, when they fire at the same time, one, they put out an incredible amount of tight, real deal low end, like real deal, but it also cancels out any vibration in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. So these speakers, you can put straight on your desk if it can hold the weight, mm -hmm. and it ain't gonna vibrate at all. Uh, when I went out to the factory, they put a, a, a piece, a, a glass of water on top of the speakers, and that thing does not move. Mm -hmm. It is not, it is not the T Rex effect of uh, yeah. Jurassic Park. Yeah. That thing is still. Yep. Okay. That just shows you the physics behind it. And you can crank these. You can crank them. Now they've kind of created like a super four-way design. This is the MM26, which is their new, I'd say their new flagship. Um, it is the big brother to the MM27. Which was what really made the name. Um, Dave Grohl has them. Uh, um, Timbaland, you know, Timbaland, everybody. Um, everybody. Uh, Skrillex everybody. uses them. Everybody. Um, everybody. We've sold them to to Slander. Um, mm -hmm. We sold them to to Blau. They're huge in EDM because they are tight, mm -hmm. they are accurate, and the low end is insane. And you can crank them. Now we talked about reference. Okay, what's really cool about the barefoot speakers is they use a, a technology they call Meme, which is basically you're getting four speakers you're from one. one position. Something we didn't really talk about was that when you're listening in different positions, if they're, if they're close to you and further out and then further out, uh, they sound different. Mm -hmm. If you took the same set of speakers and spread them apart, you're gonna get a different impression of the music. So with Barefoot, from one mix position, from one set of speakers, you're gonna be able to turn a knob and the first position on the knob is the mix cube. Mm -hmm. You're going to get that tiny, shitty little speaker sound yep. that you need mm -hmm. as a reference. The next one up is called Old School. That's your NS10M mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. The next notch up, you're going to have that barefoot flat sound. And when I say flat, what they do with these things is they crank it up mm -hmm. on a forklift, they put it in a box, and they tune it to be correct. Just absolutely, they, they translate. It is mm -hmm. tight. And then the last setting is hi-fi. So they have this nice smiley face curve. So that's your, that's your producer sound. That's your action. You know, mm -hmm. it's got the nice low end. It's got really bright high end. It's an exciting set of speakers. So from one set of speakers, you get four set of speakers. So yeah, they cost thirteen thousand dollars for a pair, but mm -hmm. there's a reason. You're getting four sets of speakers in one. Absolutely. And it's they're all the right set of speakers. This is a tool. This is if you are at that level, this is the tool that you need. Now let's go to the footprints for a second. So they wanted, to, they wanted to make a speaker that was a little more consumable, mm -hmm. they could, that more people could afford, yep. that they could work with. So they came out with the Footprint series. They have the Footprint 01 and the Footprint 02. These right here are Footprint 02s. And let me tell you, I'd be hard pressed to think of a speaker in this room that sounds as good as these little speakers do. Mm -hmm. They also have the dual firing subs. They got the dome radiating tweeter in the middle. These things, they bump. If you're doing EDM, if you're doing hip hop, you know if you're doing R&B, mm -hmm. anything that's got a lot of low end, but still needs to be detailed. You need to hear all the nuances of what's going on. You want to hear vocals right. You want to yep. hear all that stuff right. This is a top tier level speaker. The, the, the vocals, like the vocal representation of the Barefoots are amazing. I don't know how they do it. Adam knows how they do it. But when uh, we were listening to an Usher track, Here I Stand, and you, it sounds almost as if Usher is right there in the room in front of you. And it, it puts it right smack in the center. And from an engineering perspective, well, I want to hear the vocal and be able to tweak it the way I want to. The Barefoots had the best representation of how it did it. A lot of speakers sound good overall flat. And that, you know, everyone's ears are different. I got the smallest ears in the world, but everyone's rep, what you want to hear is different. It's different. Now, Understand this, if you've never done this before, you are not the reference, right? You're learning how to have a reference. So, but but sometimes you may need the speaker to help you in that case. And if you can afford it, the, the footprints are amazing. The, uh, the, of 
course, many mains are. Everyone wants to be like Mike, like I said. That's the barefoot. But if you need something that's going to give you a representation of your vocal representation and kind of separate it so you can hear that frequency, barefoot. It's it. It's it. Now, um, I was going to say, oh, the other, uh, something I learned at Barefoot, which is also another cool reference check. If you're going to set, listen to a set of speakers and you want to really listen to how they sound, um, when I was out there, they told me, and we, and we listened to some speakers to, to compare it, you just play spoken word. Mm -hmm. You play just mm -hmm. someone speaking, mm -hmm. just through a set of speakers, and if it sounds like a person, mm -hmm. that's a good set of speakers. Yeah. If it sounds like a box, mm -hmm. then it's not a good set of speakers. It's doing something else to the sound. It should sound like someone is in the room with you right. if that speaker is on point. Yeah, Barefoots do that. They do that. They mm -hmm. really have designed it. The, other, the one other cool thing I think about Barefoot that is pretty unique, I think, in the world of speakers, mm -hmm. is that if something goes wrong, let's say someone comes in and does poke something on your speakers, these things are built like mortar shells. I mean, like they'll ship you a woofer and you just got to screw the thing in and it's over. Like it's game on. So if you can't be down, if you need to be like mission critical and have your stuff working all the time, it's an incredible setup. It's a really, a really top tier line of stuff. Um, where are we at? We're up. We got a winner. Let's see if there's any questions. Do we have any like questions uh, that we want to, that we want to like ask from the, from the people out there? Tom, we got anything? If not, we can just go to the winner. We've done a lot of stuff. There's probably more stuff. We do have PMCs on the floor. Yes, PMC result six. So these right here are PMCs. Um, another extremely top tier level of speakers. Um, this is a deep box. They have their deep in technology up here, which really widens out the sweet spot of a speaker. The other really important thing that, that uh, PMC does, they use this it's like a wave. ATL is what they call it, yeah. um, which is a transmission line. So it's 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 giving the bass frequencies in the speaker a lot of room to open up and actually, you know, to actually hear a sound. It takes you need to actually give the sound wave space to develop. Yeah. So even in a small box, what it's done is it's given that bass wave time to develop so that by the time it comes out the front, mm -hmm. it's time aligned with the rest of the speakers and it gives you an incredibly accurate and detailed set of uh, a sound. They're more known for their 2-2 two -two series, which are big boys. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of studios up in New York use a lot of PMCs. Um, but for around $3,000, the Result 6 is an incredible box. Oh, yeah. um, I'd say it's really good for, for gospel. It's really good for jazz. They're a little more, they're, they're not quite as heavy as the Barefoots. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get that punch. You know, it's not going to punch you in the face. Um, but it's a really honest set of speakers. It's a good set of speakers to base, you know, to, to, to mix yeah. on, to create music on. Um, let's see. Any other questions out there? Any other questions, Tom? What else you got? Anything else in there? Nothing. Nothing. Man. We nailed it. We nailed it. We just killed this. Yep. Well, guys, if you have any other questions at all, one, come listen to speakers. Like, we can talk about this stuff as much as we want. You learn a lot from listening to a track that you know across 30 different sets of speakers. You will hear things, I promise you, you will hear things you've never heard before. And you will learn stuff both about the music and about speaker design. It is the most important thing in your studio. You will make so many decisions based off of what you're hearing that it is worth taking the time to understand why you're hearing that, okay? You need to think about these speakers when you're thinking, don't let the speakers be the afterthought, okay? You can buy all the coolest gear in the world, you can have Avalon this and Manly that, Neumann this and SSL and blah, 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 whatever. And if you're not listening to a set of speakers that lets you hear that, you have wasted a ton of money yep. on not being able to realize the awesomeness that that gear provides you. Man, one more thing. People, please. People. People, my fellow Americans. <laughs> People, buy good cable for your speakers. Please. It buy good difference. cables okay i've been in factories in montreal i've been all over the world a little bit and i've seen the difference there's a phenomenon that the higher end cable you'll notice there's an arrow on the cable on one end scientists can't figure this out magnet the electrons like to travel in a certain direction cheap cable they don't give you an arrow because they don't care the good cable has an arrow because the people have plugged it in and flipped it and found out which one sounds better. Look, I gotta say, okay, both Ed and I are 
are went to college for electrical engineering. Yes. Like we studied the science of this stuff. Okay. When I first worked here, I was like, copper's copper, cable's cable. No. What's the difference? No. Then I started using Mogami cable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I went back to the old cable and I was like, holy crap. Buy good cable. What what have I been doing all my life? What have I been taught? It's all made up. This is real deal stuff. Makes a difference. It makes all the difference in the world. I the the best explanation I can give you. It's like imagine the a pipe of water. Mm -hmm. Okay, a cheap cable is a tiny little pipe, and you're trying to cram all this information down this pipe, and it just ain't getting there. Yeah, some some will get out the end, but it's not the full thing. The best cable is this just a massive pipe, and all the water can rush through, and you'll hear all this information you didn't even know existed. It will change your life. It is, it'll be the cheapest upgrade you make to your studio and it will blow you away. I'll tell you one thing. Go to the audiophile world. Oh, don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go to the audiophile world. I was able to go to Moon Factory in Montreal and I've watched how they put the amplifiers together and I've seen the way they do their, their audio. They have cable, like Focal makes $300,000 speakers. The cable that they use to connect those speakers to the amplifier is $35,000. I, I know I'm wearing a mask. You can't see my face. Ugh. But $35,000 for cable. All right, and I said, what in the world? And they explained to me the electrons. And they explained to me what's going on. I said, why would I buy a $300,000 speaker and connect it to a cheap $1 cable? Because I'm losing all the... Everything is... The life of the sound is coming through the cable. It's, it is... Buy it... good cable. Invest. Don't think of a cable as, oh, I got to buy cables. No, no. That's just as important as a speaker. Be excited about cables, guys. It, it literally, if you want to take your, if you want to take your studio set up up a notch and you don't want to just like throw it on a couple hundred or thousand dollars, buy a good set of cables. We just change your life. You're welcome. Absolutely. It's that easy. It's that easy. Like we said in the beginning, your audio signal is only as good as the weakest link. Because you could be using a universal audio Apollo interface mm -hmm. and barefoot speakers. Mm -hmm. And if you are the dummy out there, they went with the cheapest cables you could get just because you thought they were cables. I, I, I hope the best for you They're, because that is the biggest waste. It is so inexpensive. It's a couple hundred bucks for a set of really good Mogami cables. Yep. It will change the game. There are people who also, just so you know, there are people that I know that will buy a product and swap out the AC cable and because they've done tests and proven that the electricity that's going to the box varies from the AC cable. It needs good power. It needs good power. It all it all starts to it can get really deep, guys. You can lose your mind. Yes, you can spend a hundred dollars for an AC cable. It's like, why did I do this? But it's like food. You want McDonald's or do you want you know, filet mignon. filet mignon, right? And if you give your devices good power, like there's a, there's a, some inexpensive ways of doing it, but 14 gauge, get the thickest AC cable you can con to connect your speakers to connect everything. The thicker the cable, the more electrons, the more juice that can get there. The thinner the cable, the tighter it is to get there. It's like trying to breathe through a straw yep. as opposed to through a big pipe. Okay, it all makes a difference. We're not trying to take your money. We're trying to help you with your value of product. You get the, the good power cable, your speakers will last longer. So look, these are, like we've started well off with, these are tools, okay? Mm -hmm. these, these are precision built tools that are designed to help you create and craft your music, mm -hmm. okay? You need to take the time to design a system that's gonna work for what you do. And understanding what you do is important and finding the set of speakers that works for your type of music, for your budget, for your space, it's all it all plays together and that's why we're here okay come on in if you can if you're around here fly here if you need to it happens drive over here listen to a bunch of speakers and uh you'll learn a lot we'll help you pick out the right speakers for your genre we'll let your ears do the decision making you'll you'll learn a lot you'll hear a lot it'll be a good time and we'll talk about everything else that goes with it too. We'll show you the right cables. We'll show you the right interface. We'll show you the recoil stabilizers. We'll talk about monitor controllers if we have to. We'll build you a system that's going to work to do professional level stuff. I'll say one last thing. One last thing. Um, everyone has a start. Everyone's start is where it is. When I first started, I couldn't afford speakers. Okay. And then I got the cheapest ones they had because that's what I could afford. Okay. We understand. Okay. 
where you are is where you are. We're not going to make fun of you. We've all been there. I've had nothing but uh, a Casio keyboard. I'm a songwriter, okay? I've had the worst there is. Now, in time, I'm able to do better. So we, we have everything at every price point here, and we do understand. Everyone here, everyone at Chuck Levin's it loves music, and we love what we do. And we understand that there's some people that are high, and there's some people that's trying to become high, okay? Not with marijuana either. But so we want we just want you to know that we are here for you. All right. So I think without further ado, mm -hmm. uh, let's let's pick a winner. Let's pick a winner for this for the stream. Tom, mm -hmm. behind the scenes, who wins the JBL three hundred five P set of speakers? Who did it? That's cool. Matt R, California. <laughs> Congratulations, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. That's awesome. Thanks for submitting. Everyone else, we really appreciate mm -hmm. you. We appreciate you watching, listening, dealing with me and Ed. We did a lot of stuff, and we didn't even get to all the speakers in this room. There's some really cool stuff in here to talk about. Um, next week, we got a really cool stream. Henry, I see you taking guitars, and you know what? You're in for a treat next week. We have Jeff Gensler of Gensler Amplification oh, cool. coming on the stream next week. So you'll get to talk to the man himself. we got Paul Shine coming on with me. So it is going to be a a deep dive into guitar cabinet design, bass cabinet design, and a really like a really cool, we talked about woofers and stuff like that, an incredibly cool way of designing bass cabinets and bass amps. Um, and we got a killer giveaway, so stay tuned. Uh, be on the lookout for our Instagram, check out our Instagram. We just hit 13,000 followers this week. Whoa. Awesome, Whoa. thank you guys. Um, we appreciate it. If you haven't liked our Instagram, like us on, on uh, Instagram, at Chuck Levins. We're always putting out cool content, cool videos, cool videos, cool photos, all kinds of stuff. That's where we'll announce these giveaways, future streams. Like us on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, hit that like button because we also have cool stuff and more cool giveaways. YouTube, subscribe. We got good stuff happening there too. Um, if you want to see other stuff on the stream, hit us up. Shoot us an email, live at chucklevins.com. Come on in. Give us a shout. We are still cranking these out. Like I said, next week, Jeff Gensler, Gensler Amplification. It's going to be hot. We got a crazy giveaway. Guys, that's all we got. Happy Wednesday. Awesome. See you guys next week. Thanks. <laughs>